We're going to take horseradish and make homemade horseradish sauce. And figure out what's going on with our squash. That's all coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra. Sponsored in part by DollarSeed.com for your flowers, vegetables, and herbs. All organic seeds, all only a dollar a pound. ManureTea.com, authentic haven brand, 100% natural soil condition for the home garden. Squareman Worm Farm, organic farm and gardening supply. Located in Columbus, Wisconsin. SquarewomanWormFarm.com. LittleSpringsSoap.com, handmade soap with simple, recognizable ingredients. The Garden Stamp, stamp planting for more efficient, effective, and speedy planting. Now, horseradish is, can be a very invasive plant, and most people don't grow it in their gardens, but we have some grow alongside the house, so we're going to harvest it, and then take it in the kitchen, we're going to process it, and there is a way of propagating it where you can plant it, and it'll come back year after year. So here is the remnants of what our horseradish plant looked like, or where it was. You can kind of see some of it right there. Now, based on uh, your education, you may or may not have horseradish growing in your area uh, if you're unfamiliar with what it looks like. So let's uh, go ahead and dig some of this up and see what we want, to, what we can get out of here. Now the best time to harvest horseradish is any time of the year in months ending in er, like November or December or October, is the best time to harvest it. Let's see what we got here. Obviously the ground is cold and somewhat froze, so we're just going to gently try to extract it out. There's one root there. That's part of some horseradish. Let's see what else we can get out of here. I'd like to get that big ball there out. There's a nice big root of horseradish. Now these are the tops here and we can just cut right below them and they'll propagate. We can replant them here or other, other places and uh, they will regrow next year. So I think for what we're gonna use, I'm gonna get this one. Uh, tear that one, let's try to get that one out. Cause I don't want this, I don't want the whole ball cause we're not gonna make a whole lot of horseradish. I think that'll work. So let's go ahead and take this in the kitchen and we will go ahead and propagate, or we'll cut the tops off when we can propagate that. We'll go in the kitchen and make some horseradish sauce for winter use. Alright, so we've got our horseradish here and we've cleaned it up. We've got a lot of different pieces here. Now, I was talking about the tops here. These we're going to take and cut off about dough there and I can split these two. Now you can put these back in the ground so they will regenerate and grow next year. Where we harvested these from we're just going to put them back in the ground also we're going to save some put some in containers here in the house and then when we go to large garden we'll plant those as well but that's a good thing and you want young plants because as you can see here we've got some breakage because this is an older plant and it can be a little more woody and the older plants do tend to have uh, the potential of having a little more heat than a young plant will. So I'm going to go ahead and start peeling these and Holly's going to get her ingredients together. We're going to make a couple of different flavors of horseradish sauce. Okay, so make, when you make your own horseradish sauce, you have to obviously peel the horseradish, then you grate it, and then you add some different ingredients. We're going to make probably three different kinds or so. And so what you need for your base is you need some sour cream. So I'm going to use some sour cream here. You need about between a quarter and a half of a cup. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and like I said we're going to do three different kinds. So that's hmm, probably about a quarter to a third. That's pretty good there for this one. Then we're going to add some mayonnaise. Same 
same thing about. You can see, you can, and as you peel this, you want to have it very circulated. You want to have a lot of air movement because even just that little bit has become very arom uh, aromatic, and you can very very easily smell the heat on yeah, this. Most definitely. Okay, so then we add our mayonnaise, and it just helps add to the flavor. And then for this one, you're gonna you want to add some acid, so we're gonna add about a tablespoon of lemon juice. You can use bottled or fresh, freshly squeezed. We always have bottled on hand, so that's what I'm gonna use. So we add that. So this will be our first, our first base. I'm also gonna add a clove of garlic as well that I'm gonna chop up just to give it, just to give it a little more different flavor. So we're gonna get this peeled here and um, grate it up, and we're gonna go ahead and add it to, to this base. We're gonna show three different kinds and I'll put the basic recipe in the show notes for you if you want to make it yourself. Okay, so now we're just going to add some salt and pepper. Just a few turns with a salt shaker here, and, or the pepper shaker. And then I'm going to add some salt. Just a pinch is, is fine, just to help bring out the flavors. And then we've got the horseradish here. It's about, you want about a third of a cup or so. So we're going to get that added. The horseradish does definitely have a really strong aroma. So if you're doing this, you want to do this in a well-ventilated area. Maybe put your ceiling fan on if you have that or get you know a different fan and kind of let the air circulate because that way you're not just getting all the, the fumes in your eyes and your face or something like that or you're going to put your, your swimming goggles on, whatever. It's much so, like cutting onions but much more intense. Yes, yeah, way more intense. But hey, you know, maybe you can clear your sinuses up. You got a little stuff, you know, a little stuffed up. Clear your sinuses up. You ready so, for it? Yeah. Alright. Alright, so we've got a little bit more than a third of a cup here. I'm just going to add a good chunk to there. Just stir it. You just want to mix it in well. And people like this on beef, you know, sandwiches, stuff like that. Okay, so that's been mixed in well. You can obviously taste it if it's to your liking. Um, it's up to you. You can add more salt, pepper, whatever. We're going to put it in jars, and then you can actually freeze this. You can freeze it for up to a year. You want to leave some space for expansion. I would probably leave just to the to the top thread there, or the bottom thread, and then you can refrigerate it for a couple months or freeze it for up to a year. Now you can obviously you know throw this in your food processor if you have one, but my recommendations would be if you have a grater, obviously it's going to be more aromatic, but it's going to be a better, more tender horseradish because as you can see. As I'm shredding it, the tougher outer skin, even though we've peeled it, the tougher outer skin is not grating just that center portion, that the thin or the soft tissue of the horseradish is getting grated so you don't have that really tough, chewy portion in your horseradish. And then you just take the whatever doesn't shred and throw in the compost pile. And then with the food processor, it's just going to grind everything up. So it's... It's your, it's your uh, decision how you want to do it. Uh, I think this is the best way for us to do it. Okay, so we have one option here. We're going to get started on another kind. Okay, so we got three different kinds of horseradish here. We have the one with the lemon juice and the garlic, one with balsamic vinegar, and one with apple cider vinegar. Now keep in mind that when you're mixing the horseradish into everything that when you taste it, it takes a second just to feel that the heat from the horseradish and the flavor. So make sure you taste it and just wait a second so that you don't think that you have not enough because you probably have plenty. So we're going to take and uh, take these tops here and we're going to plant back in where we had them and then we're also going to take them to the, the large garden and put them there in some places where things may not grow as well as other things do. And it's a 
plant that will come back year after year after year and provide you with horseradish sauce that you don't have to buy in the store. Yep, and you can give away as gifts. You can freeze it for up to a year, like I said, and I'll make sure I leave the recipe in the show notes for you. So we grow butternut squash here at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardens, and we've had some issue with them this year, and there potentially you could may have the same issue with your squash skin looking like that. Holly, you've done some research and found out what the culprit is because you want your butternut squash to look like this, very pretty, uh, no flaws in the skin, and as large as possible. But what did you find out about the issues that we have with these particular squashes there? Well, it's called black rot, and the scientific term is Didamella bryone. And what it creates is it creates these spots like this, and it makes them look kind of like scabs almost. And this occurs during the growth, and then most of the time it pops up after harvest. It affects winter which, squash. Which is what happened to us. We right. harvested and they were fine. All of a sudden, we brought them into cure, and this became, became a problem for us. Right. And it affects winter squash, such as butternut, acorn, hubbard, and uh, spaghetti squash as well. It happens, though, during, during the growing. If it has too much water, and we actually did have quite a wet summer. A wet, wet summer, very cool summer. So when it's so. laying on the, you know, on the, the ground like this, it, it just basically, since this part is more towards the ground, I guess the water kind of pools there. Well, and also it's close to the stem, too. It's close too. to the stem, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's what happens. And it is still edible. Now, if you cut this open and there's the rot on the inside, then you don't want to eat that part. But if it's just on the flesh right here, you can still eat it. And as long as you, you want to make sure you obviously cook it properly as well. So cut the bad parts out and it's good to eat. So that's something that if you've experienced in your squash garden this year, now you know what it is. It's from too much water and really there's no real way of preventing that, I guess. And It happens a lot in greenhouses too. So if you have any greenhouse growing squash, um, th that can be common as well because greenhouses tend to be a, a moist area as well. Well, thanks for watching. I'm Joy. And I'm Holly. And join us next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. This has been a Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Extra. For more organic gardening and food preserving, visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. The show never ends on our Facebook page. Keyword, Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Like the page and continue the discussion there. You can now follow us on Twitter, see what we're up to and what we're doing at the garden. The address, the W-I Veg Gardener, G-A-R-D-E-N-R. -E you can email us at the W-I Veg Gardener at gmail.com with your questions, comments, or suggestions about the show.